you have your Bible in your hand, turn to Mark, the ninth chapter, Mark's Gospel, the ninth chapter. We're going to open our service in prayer because we need to pray for this box of names. <coughs> I'm thankful that Sean and Zena and Aubrey are with us, and Josh, this morning, it's good to have you back, and uh, Regina has put a lot of prayer requests in this box. Mm -hmm. I try to keep up, even though I don't come, I try to. Okay, well, we appreciate you doing that, Regina, and every time that we pray, we're praying for all of those prayer requests that's in this box. God is answering prayer. If you know of a prayer that you have been responsible for, for putting in this box that God has answered, let us know. Because that way we can say, praise the Lord, we know he's still at work. <clears throat> and I know that God has answered the prayers. I know that he's not dead and he's still in. In fact, God's here this morning. God is here this morning. God loves you. God made it possible for you and I to be here. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this opportunity that you've given us this morning to once again come together in this place that we might truly worship you. Lord, touch our lives, allow us to feel and know that you are close at hand. Help us, Lord, go forth shouting that others might see Christ in us and give you the glory. Lord, we pray this morning for each one that is here, even those prayer requests that maybe hasn't been mentioned, those that maybe haven't been put in the box. Lord, we know that you know our each and every need. We would ask that you might grant those needs in your time and according to your will. Now we pray for the, each <coughs> prayer request that's in this box. I know that there are some that have been in there for quite a while that maybe you've already answered and we're not aware of. But Lord, we do thank you for those prayer requests. And if there are more, Lord, just send them forth that we might add them to our time of prayer together. We pray, Lord, for the ministry of Kirk Kellogg and his wife with Sudanese in Washington, D.C. area. And Lord, we know that their prayer request that they send once a month is in this box. And Lord, we just ask that you be with all of the needs there. Lord, this morning we pray for the church that we are going to pray for. The New Salem Baptist Church <clears throat> out of Owensville. Lord, we pray for their pastor, Jack Curlinon, and his wife, Anna, as they attempt to serve in that church. Lord, we pray that great things will come out of that ministry that you might be honored above all. And Lord, we pray for this church and those in this community that do not know Christ. Lord, help us to reach out and touch more lives to your glory. Now, Lord, this morning we pray for this message. We pray for the services after this one of fellowship. We ask your blessings upon not only each one that's here, but the food. We know that you've made it possible, Heavenly Father. And we give you the praise. When we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Has everybody here got two hands? Hold your hands up if you got two hands. All right. We're going to pre 
preach about two hands this morning. I'm first going to read the scripture. <clears throat> Mark the ninth chapter, beginning with 43, and we're going to read beginning with 43 and read through 50. 43 through 50. So has everybody found that in your Bible? Now I'm hoping that we have some different translations here because I'm going to be reading this scripture out of the Tony Evans' Bible. <clears throat> You'll have to excuse me until I get my throat cleared out. <clears throat> but I hope we have a couple of different translations this morning because I'm going to be asking some questions concerning this scripture. Two hands. And it's good to realize that everybody's got two hands. Beginning with verse 43. And if your hand causes you to fall away, cut it off. Anybody here want to lose a hand this morning? You don't want to lose a hand, do you, Carson? You want both of your hands, right? Yeah, we don't want to lose them hands. All right. If, if your hand causes you to fall away, Cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell. It's better to have it's better to have one hand and be maimed than to go to hell. Catching that? Two hands. Why do you think this scripture talks about two hands? Think about that for a minute as we read on. And if your foot causes you to fall away, cut it off. Has everybody here got two feet? All right. You didn't know that we were going to be talking about you this morning in this scripture, did you? And if your foot causes you to fall away, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eyes causes you to fall away, gouge it out. Has everybody here got two eyes? You know, we used to play a game with all the grandkids. And uh, it's, it's like, it kind of goes like this. Carson? Carson? Where's your nose at? Where at? Can you point to your nose? All right. Where's your ears at? You have two ears, right? So she points to her ear. That's what our grandkids and great grandkids used to do. And we'd sit for the longest time always playing that game. You know, where's your, where's your belly button at? You got a belly button? My granddaughter that was with us last night wanted to know about her belly button. She wanted to know if I had a belly button. I said, yeah, I belong to the stomach club. I have a belly button. You can't belong to the stomach club if you don't have a belly button. Okay? Well, that's the little game we played. Well, here in the scripture that we're reading, it's talking about two eyes, two hands, two feet. Two feet. And these can cause us a lot of trouble, can't they? I, I've got, I've actually, like Wayne, you know, I've got four eyes. Karen's got four eyes. Cliff's got four eyes. We have to have an extra pair of eyes, don't we, to see. All right, let's continue with the reading of the scripture. We were at verse 47, right? And if your eye causes you to fall away, gouge it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell. hell. What is hell? I've heard 
heard people say it's hell on earth. It's hell on earth. Verse 48, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Verse 49, for everyone will be salted with fire. Verse 50, salt is good, but if the salt should lose its flavor, how can you season it? Have salt among yourselves and be at peace with one another. Now here comes another good question. I hope you've been following this scripture from verse 43 all the way through to 50. I want someone who has a King James Version of uh, translation to read me verse 44. You want to read verse 44? Where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Verse 44? You said 44, didn't you? Yeah, 44. That's what you read. Well, for the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. You sure that wasn't 48? No, it's 44. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Somebody else? It says the same thing in 48, too. It says the same thing in 48. Yeah. So 44 and 48 is the same in your transaction. Yeah. And 46. And 46. And yeah, 46. And 46. 44, 46. Well, Tony Evans must have missed something because he doesn't have no 44 in here. And I read 43, and then I read 45, and then I read 47. It wants to make sure you get the point across. I don't even see 46. <laughs> okay, well, we, we lost that one, didn't we? We have to discard Tony Evans' Bible because he left out those scriptures. He figured one time saying it was enough, I guess. And the important thing is, what we're reading, is that the scripture says, if you have two hands, and one of them causes you, or your two hands causes you to fall away, you're going to cut it off. Two eyes gouge one out rather than to lose your salvation. So do you know where hell is? As it says, lest you fall into hell. Where is hell? You know, we used to play a thing at, at Mar um, Mount Pleasant Baptist Church, and we would, every time we would come together, I would ask different ones, where is heaven? And they would tell me heaven is up. And is hell a real place? Is heaven a real place? I've always heard, and scripture probably will back that up, heaven is up. But where's hell? Where is hell? You know, we call it all different kinds, kinds of names. And throughout the scripture, it has many different names, such as Hades, Sheol, Gehenna, the bottom pit, down under. Well, when you die and they put you in the grave, you're down under, right? So is that hell? Does everybody then who dies go to hell? I looked in the back of, of my translation here, the Tony Evans Bible, and, uh, <clears throat> and I'm not saying anything against Tony Evans and his translation, but I thought this was an interesting study. For some reason or another, for the last uh, month, I guess, uh, I've had a feel that we need to talk more or we need to study more about hell to know some more things about it because it may tell us some things. Jesus talked a lot about hell uh, in the uh, pastor's roundtable that we had just last month. It was on hell and uh, the consequences of hell. And David Kruger, who is pastor of the uh, First Baptist 
Church of Lynn, is also the one who conducts this study, or more or less is in charge of this study. And he always comes up with all of these different scriptures. And so he, he listed in the New Testament alone all of the scriptures that pertain uh, pertinent to uh, heaven, or hell, I'm sorry, to hell. And he listed 27 scriptures on a sheet of paper for us to all look at. So we can have a we can have a Bible study on what hell is and have all kinds of scriptures to look at. So maybe after we are through with the study of the names of God, we will be able to look at hell and what it's all about. And that might help us to learn something. I looked in the back of this translation, and you may want to do the same if, if you have a uh, concordance in yours. Uh, and there were 22 verses on heaven listed in this translation. So you want to, might want to jot that down. 22 verses on heaven. But I looked up hell, and that was counting a, a page or two before heaven, and there was only two verses listed for hell. And this Mark 9th chapter, verse 43 to 50, was one of them. The other one was Luke, the 12th chapter, and verse 5, which says, Who has the authority to send someone to hell? That's a question you might want to think about. Who has the authority to send someone to hell? God has the authority. God has the sole authority. Will God send you and I to hell? Maybe if we don't begin to put our two hands together. And when we put our two hands together, what happens? We pray. How many of you, when you pray, Put your two hands together. Not all the time, do we? Well, Aubrey says she does. That's good, yes. Sometimes we just forget we're in a hurry. Got to get this prayer over with, you know? So we forget to put our two hands together. Why do you think God gave you two hands, two eyes, and two feet? We can throw in two years, too. Because God wants us to see, God wants us to hear, God wants us to pray, God wants us to walk to church. <laughs> it's too far for me to walk, I'll tell you. I can hardly walk up the aisle anymore. But God said, go, didn't he, in his great command, go. And so we have to go, we have to do some walking. <clears throat> two hands is important here because your two hands, if they don't cause you to fall away, will keep you out of hell. And who wants to go to hell? Well, there's a thing called purgatory. And some people believe in purgatory. And it's halfway, supposedly halfway between heaven and here. Yeah. Right? Well, that's part of the study on hell. To learn all about purgatory and what it means. Do we believe in it or do we not? So you see, God has given us two ears that we might hear all that we can hear and come to understand what his salvation is all about. Did I finish that scripture all the way? I did, didn't I? It says that when the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched, we sometimes think of hell as a place of fire, right? So when you see a big fire burning somewhere, you might say, well, that's hell. I suppose those people out in California and that area when they were losing their homes and the businesses probably thought that was like hell. And 
And they probably were, as they flee from that situation, they probably wanted no part of hell. So if it's a place of fire, look out. There's scripture that backs us up. That this fire will be unquenchable. And they would like to have water there to quench their dry, their throat, dry throats and their thirst. Notice the very last part of verse 50. It says, Have salt among yourselves and be at peace with one another. There are only two roads. There's the right road and the wrong road in this life. There are only two ways. The broad way that leads unto destruction or the narrow way that leads unto life, the scripture says. There are two gates. One is the broad gate. A lot of people go through that gate. There's the narrow gate. And a lot of people can't find that gate, the scripture says. A lot of people can't find that gate. What is our purpose in life? Our purpose is to show those people how to find that narrow gate that they may not go to hell to find heaven as their everlasting abiding place. So we want to think about what hell is. The Bible says that you either accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior or you deny Him. And if you do not accept the Lord Jesus Christ, you cannot go to heaven. There's only one other place. That's hell. That's hell. I don't want to see anybody go to hell, do you? So we must begin to show them the way, the right way. We must begin by taking our two hands and folding them together and praying that God will call them to become a Christian, to follow Him. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank You this morning that You have given Your, your Word, even though it's partially this morning on what hell is and that there is a place, that it's a real place. And you've mentioned it several times in your word, that if we do not accept Jesus as your son, we may be on our way to hell. <clears throat> and Lord, we would pray this morning that everyone who hears and comes to understand will think seriously about is it heaven or is it hell. <clears throat> that they might come to accept Jesus into their lives as their personal Savior and say it's the Lord that I'm following every step of the way. Well, I'm heaven bound. Now, Lord, your blessings upon each one that's here in this service, upon the service to follow, and we'll give you all the praise. Lord, we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.